Hello YouTube friends. Here's another little sewing for baby video. I'm going to do this little um, piece in the corner over all the film that I took of this. So what I'm making this time is a ball, a little ball, for the baby to play with. I printed off these uh, sheets. Uh, you find them easily enough uh, on the internet. Uh, these five-sided uh, shapes, and temporarily can't remember what you call a five-sided shape. I'll remember at the end. And the reason why I've stuck them down to my cutting mat is that there are about five there. So that when I cut this, oh, I'm all speeded up now. So when I cut these shapes out very accurately with my um, scalpel there, I'm actually getting uh, several uh, at the same time. And so long as you don't cut through to the side of the paper, they will be accurate. Next then, I got out all these pink Liberty scraps from my Liberty drawer and cut approximately the size I needed and pressed them all. Uh, yeah. So there were, And you need 12 of these five-sided shapes. What's a five-sided shape called? Can't remember. <laughs> uh, you need five... Uh, um, sorry, you need 12 of these um, shapes. Now, this is all English paper piecing. So this video is all about how to do English paper piecing. And I actually do labour the point. If you know how to do this, skip along. There'll be more videos coming soon that aren't uh, such detailed uh, descriptions of what I'm doing. OK, so I'm pinning the shape. I've speeded some of this up a bit and cut bits of it out. And I'm just cutting an approximate uh, half inch all the way around these uh, these um, paper pieces, 12 of them. And next then, now when I tack these on, there's several ways of doing this. I like to sew them on. I know there are some people who like to use glue, a special kind of glue, but I tack them on. It's easy for me to do it that way. It's how I was taught. And I try to choose a colour of thread that's very contrasting to the fabric that I'm um, sewing so that you can see it really easily. Tie a nice big knot in the end and then now out with the pin, holding this really carefully, just checking that it's um, central. So you turn the first side over and you're kind of pressing it on with your finger and thumb. Fold the next corner and make sure that you go through all the layers of fabric. Now watch this next one. Fold it over, go through all the layers of fabric and that will anchor it all. And the next one, and then on the last one, it's ever so slightly different. You only need one tacking stitch on each side, except for the last side, which has got two folds, hasn't it? So you fold the first one down exactly like before but now, oh, that's just got caught there. Now watch, fold that down really carefully, like so. And then we're going to do one more tacking stitch over the top of that so that it will secure it. That's all it needs. Then you can cut that off there now. And there is your five sided shape. OK, so 12 of these you need for your for this uh, Liberty um baby's ball. The next thing then is we're going to stitch this all together. We've got all 12 of them, I think. Um, yeah, we have. Okay, so you just carry on stitching those pieces together there until the whole thing is done. Now, hold the two two sides together and the reason why I've come in nice and close here is I want you to see that all I'm doing is catching the fabric on the fold. I'm not going anywhere near the paper. I can feel the paper with my needle but I'm not piercing the paper. So when I take these papers out there should be no needle marks on them at all. And so the stitches are very close together so that this this uh, finished uh, project will be robust robust and last a long time when you come to the to the end of one two of the sides here then 
what we don't want is because this is a three dimensional object, we don't want it to gape, we don't want there to be holes. So I'm actually going over the um, those stitches there five or six times. And then when we open that out, that's a lovely neat seam and you can't even see the stitches. That's why the stitches are nice and small. Now this is not a flat thing, obviously it's a 3D thing. So the next um, two sides that you sew together won't meet up with the other piece, but that's how it's meant to be. Okay, so now then we're just going to stitch all 12 pieces together in the way that you would imagine. It, it comes together in a really easy way, this project. Okay, so you just carry on stitching those pieces together there until the whole thing is done. Okay then, it's, uh, it's a little while later now uh, and I've picked this project up again and what we need now is to <laughs> let Norma come and settle on our knee and have a look at all the edges now are all sewn together and I've left two of them undone here so that we can take out the papers, turn it inside out, or turn it the right way around, stuff it, and then um, sew those pieces up. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take out all the tacking stitches and take all the papers out. So, glasses on. Now the reason why I choose a different colour, a really very different colour thread um, to the fabric is so that I can see it really, really easily. Now, if I look at how I sewed that, then I can see that the, the knot is there, I can feel it in fact, and that the two overstitches are there. So I'm just going to pull the overstitches out, like so. And then I should be able to get hold of the knot and just pull the knot out so that the piece of paper comes out really neatly. Now if we look carefully at that there are a few little marks on there but there shouldn't really be too many stitch marks. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take all the papers out um, of except for these two that are by the opening. Two, three. I'm going to leave the paper in those ones until the very end. So I'm just going to get on now and take out all the papers that are completely stitched round. If they haven't been stitched together, I'm going to leave them in until the very end. Okay, I'm going to do that now then. I'll search them all out. There are only 12. It shouldn't take me that long. Okay, pull out the double stitch, pull out the knot. Paper comes out really easily. We'll do that all over. There we go, there's another one. Pull that, pull the knot, and that's us done. If you're careful with these, you can use them again. Pentagons, I think we're going to call them. <laughs> because I think that's what they're called. Okay, see you in a minute at the end of this process. Once all the papers are out and finished with, except for these last three here, then we're going to take this one, one at a time, we're going to take them out very, very carefully. And I've got a, um, I've got a needle threaded up here with some thicker thread. Take the, take the thread out, leave the paper in because I'm going to press that down with my fingers really firmly and then I'm going to slide the paper out carefully so that that edge stays exactly as it should be and then with the knot on the outside, on the right side of the, of the ball, I'm going to do a running stitch, just a tacking stitch, in thicker thread so that I can see it really easily. Did I put a knot on the end of that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so I'll do that again. I'm going to make sure that the 
knot is on the right side of the ball, not on the wrong side, so that I can cut it off really easily when it's time. And then I'm going to do some big stitches. I'll show you them in a minute when I've done them in a thicker sort of ov really obvious thread. It's only that way so that I can see it more easily all the way round those edges so that they stay. Can you see that? So that those edges stay folded, basically. Don't pull it so that it's, that's it. So I'm going to do that with the other two sides because I've left three edges open and they'll all have to be stitched down later. So I'll take this out. Oops, Daisy. I'll take this out carefully. Use my, my edge there to get that one out. Take this out. Slide the paper out carefully. And then I'm just going to do a little running stitch along the folded edge that's not yet secured, like so, so that it stays in place while I turn it the right way round and stuff it and do all of that. One more to do. I'll be right back with you. OK. And then when you get to the end of that, you almost don't even need to do an overstitch. Just trim that off with a long tail. So the ball's got no paper in it at all now. So we can carefully fold this. We can turn this the right way around. Just be careful not to pull on the on the seams there that haven't got that aren't. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to turn this the right way around, and now it's time to stuff it. So I'm going to stuff this then with toy grade uh, stuffing, but I'm also going to put in something that makes a little rattly sound and I bought these, I, bought a, I think there's about 20 here uh, off the internet like you do. Now this is tiny really and it would prevent, it would present some sort of a hazard for a, a baby. So let's imagine then that my grandchild destroys this even though I sewed it really carefully, gets inside it and manages to get one of these out swallows it and chokes on it. I'm not going to feel so good about that, am I? So, in order to prevent that happening, I've taken five of these little balls and sewn them into a little pouch. So that, let's say she does manage to uh, get inside here, she'll then encounter this, by which time, hopefully, one of her parents will have noticed that she's destroyed her toy and get this off her before she can uh, uh, get inside here. It's just a total belt and braces approach, but it did feel better to me to do that. And there are five of these little rattly balls inside here, so it'll make quite a good noise. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start away with the stuffing. Start putting the stuffing inside here. And I want to stuff it really, really, really firmly. So, uh, and then when I've got half the stuffing in, I'll put my little safety um, rattle in <laughs> and that means that when the ball rolls around or we chuck it around at all it'll make a nice little noise as well. <laughs> Thought of everything. Okay I'll get back to you then when this is full and we'll see what it looks like then. And I'm going to just stitch along one of these sides here trying to be careful to keep to the edge here and also to line that up just a bit tricky, that's all. OK, so I've stitched up the open parts really carefully and now it's time to take out this uh, thread. Now you can see why it's good if it's a different colour and it's thick so that you can get hold of it really easily and so we just take these threads out okay, get hold of the knot there, pull the last bit out and that's 
that part's done and then give the whole thing a really firm kneading <laughs> to get the thing nice and round and you can hear the the rattle inside there and I know that that's safe and sound and there is our Liberty Pentagon ball it's a bit weird there so we just keep pushing it until it gets nice and round but there it is I'm very pleased with that of course if you make the the size of the papers bigger or smaller you would get a bigger or smaller finished object wouldn't you anyway guys thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you next time with another thing that I'm making for our baby